Vegeta's wares if you have coin. Hey, how's it going guys? It's your retro future boy, Ricky Summer here. And today I've come back in time to talk about large ship mining in X4 Foundations. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. The future's not set. Together, we can fight for a brighter tomorrow. Join the resistance today. All right, so up until this point, I've mostly been using medium miners to get the job done. And I'll be honest, I probably should have bought a hell of a lot more than just four. I'd, I could probably have like 20 running by now and, and I'd be making bank, but I'm a tight ass and I wanted to save up for uh, some bigger ships. And now I have enough money and, you know, we're, we're starting to get into that large ship mining. And as a little side note, I'd like to at some point assess the efficiency of a single trader versus a single medium miner early on to see, you know, which one will, will uh, accrue funds quicker in the beginning of the game. But listen, that's neither here nor there. That's an entirely different video and requires much, much more research. For the moment, I just want to talk about large ship mining because there's a couple of quirks, um, a couple of things that, that new players might not fully understand. I also want to talk about the potential efficiency of it and the profitability. Okay, so I am using a, a mag... What's it called? It's a magnetar, I think. A, a magnetar yes this is the the argon large mining ship uh, i think it looks the sexiest it's just a beautiful ship you know you know me i'm a, I'm a taladi fanboy but i'm sorry taladi i had to go with the uh with the argon this time okay so my fondest hope was that using its three docking ports on top we could uh load it up with three small miners now here's something that you might not notice straight off the bat <laughs> okay, so minerals, like raw minerals or silicon ice, presumably in Navidium, uh, they use an entirely different uh, storage system. I think they use the solid instead of container. Now, traders use the container storage system and miners use solid. So, hypothetically speaking, if we could actually task traders to take the ore out of a miner's hold and then sell it, it wouldn't work because their storage systems are incompatible. So you would have to use miners in order to sell raw minerals, right? All right, now that we got that out of the way, my fondest hope was that we would be able to load up uh, these these big, these large, big boy, big fields miners um, with small miners, which do fit on those docking pads, and uh, they would, you know, the, the large miner would sit there and just mine for days, and the small miners would, would take the minerals and ferry it out and, and sell it. That, that's what I want, right? But it seems like, like I mentioned in my last video, it seems like that command doesn't work or doesn't work the way we thought it would. So um, I haven't got a small mining ship to show you, but just for example, uh, we click on a miner, right click and then do, oh, it just doesn't work. <laughs> um, wait a second, wait a second. What, hang on, what if I use a trader? Oh, it, it just doesn't work now? It just, it, like, it doesn't show up. That's strange. That's strange. What I was hoping to show you is the assign role for uh, trade for. Why is that gone now? Why is that gone? There has been an update since, since last I played. So we are on 1.32 at the moment. And I'd like to talk about the mods I had installed in a second. Um, anyway, so previously there was that option that showed up that was trade for. And that doesn't seem to work. So I don't know if it's been removed or maybe I don't know what's going on. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. So what I was hoping for doesn't work. So uh, these large ships will go out and just mine on their own. That's how they're meant to function. But you need to be aware that you need to buy drones. Otherwise, they don't work, right? So for example... Um, now I'm not 100% sure if it just doesn't work at all with our drones or if it's just inefficient, but it's, it's out there mining, it's shooting roids, and then it's got to collect the minerals, right? So that's what you need drones for. So you, it has a capacity of, of 10 drones. You can buy mining drones and, and cargo drones. Uh, now you need the mining drones in order, you can see them right now, they're right there. Those mining drones, it's, uh, let's latch in on them. They're actually a really, they're a really nice design. I, that's, it's really cr quite creative. I like that. I like that a lot. Good on you, EgoSoft. Um, so these these uh, mining drones will go out and they'll they'll pick up the ore and 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 pull it back into our into our cargo base here. Now they don't take up the cargo the, the sorry they don't take up the landing pads, uh, but the landing pads have to open and then they go in. So I assume that means we can't have ships docked there 
<laughs> and have the have the mining drones work at the same time. So look, a little bit of disappointment here and there. Uh, so what I have done instead is I've set up. Yeah, you may notice I've I've named my uh my 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 big feels miner here the SGT Curry Pants in in honor of Sergeant Curry Pants. Now that I know that you're watching these videos, <laughs> how you doing? Um, okay, uh, so I've got two little. Let's just make sure I know what they are. They're uh. They're Falcon Sentinels, so they're Talati fighters. They're, they're very sexy looking ships. I've named them Stebbles and Lil Clugs in the service of Sergeant Curry Pants. So let's we just zoom in on that. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, there it is. So uh, this seems to be the only function that I was able to get working in a like a subordinate system, meaning having smaller ships be the sub subordinate of larger ships, and then they you know, they, they work for them essentially. So these uh, are defending my, my large ship, my um, SGT uh, curry pants here. So let's just go back to the map. You can see that they are subordinate and this does work, right? So when, before the, before the large mining ship goes through a gate or something, it sends out a command to recall uh, the smaller fighters and they'll land. It'll go off to the next mining spot. The smaller fighters will come out defend it and then the mining drones can come out and it's fine now what i've done is only have two fighters for this ship on the off chance that st something messes up and the drones need to come out while the fighters are still docked so my reasoning being that if we go to our big ship here so it's got three landing pads three landing pads, not not four or two, three, three landing pads. So um, worst case scenario, two are occupied, one the drones can come out of. All right, good, yes. And it works, there you go. So uh, it, it, yes, that's, 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 that's how you do it. So I would, I would advise you not to sit there and watch it as much as I'm, I'm so into that. I want to sit there and I want to watch the drones fly out and collect the minerals. Um, and you know what? I might be making myself out to be a liar because it is does seem to be working but i have experienced a few times where um being there watching it the ship kind of has a hard time <laughs> navigating around asteroids and whatnot um when i'm out of sector it seems to do much better now this is a this is a quirk of uh of the x series and i'm not going to go too deep into it i'm not going to say hey yes this is gospel because i don't know if it's the same engine i don't know how out of sector and inner sector works with this particular game as opposed to previous ones but uh with the last game that i've spent hundreds of hours in which is x uh terran complex 3 terran conflict and albion prelude um there is definitely a difference in how ships react depending on whether you're in the sector with it or whether it's in another sector and it's not actually rendering on your screen you know what i mean so it's it's that uh that <laughs> that recent law of physics that they've discovered that when you observe a wave it, it turns into a particle or something I, I don't know listen i'm not a physicist dude but it's interesting nonetheless so there you go you've heard it here first the x series is scientifically accurate Okay, so something else that <laughs> something else that I found really cool. Speaking of scientific accuracy, is the big mining ships are faster, right? They might be slow and sluggish, you know, with their impulse drive, so to say. Uh, but when they go into travel mode, they are fast. Okay, we can I I, I can show you this. So let's go to a, go to a Talati Wharf here. And we're going to buy a ship. So for those of you who don't know, you can buy ships remotely, and I'll I'll prove it. Let's um because this is the sector we are in right so you might be able to say yeah dog of course you can buy ships in the same sector uh let's go to a sector we are not currently in go to the wharf buy ships and you can buy ships there remotely and then you can tell them to do what do what you want <laughs> listen the more you know it's fantastic you can you can totally play this game just sitting on a station somewhere and you can control all your your ships to do whatever you want you don't have to be there it's, it's great i love playing like that okay so let's go medium size miner um the uh manorina the talati miner okay so let's just go for like a regular travel drive right so the travel speed in presumably meters per second is uh 3105 okay so now let's exit out of that and go over to the shipyard 3105 large ship uh mineral miner yes and we will put on engines the tr 
travel drive. Now let's just put the all-rounder on, right? So basic, basic stuff. It's uh, like absolute slowest travel speed is 4,415, right? Bigger ship, bigger engines, it's faster to get there, right? So this, this really excites me because then the potential there is if you can get it mining fast enough, so presumably it's a matter of how many drones you have running at any given time. If you've got a, a resource patch or an asteroid patch that's rich in exactly the resources you want, so maybe there's an element of scouting scouting out the, the, the fields and, and putting down resource uh, satellites, absolutely, which is something I haven't done because I'm a lazy bastard. <laughs> um, <laughs> so all things being equal in terms of it, you know, loading up on the minerals faster, it's gonna have a much, much bigger cargo hold than a medium miner, and it'll get to its destination quicker. And I can prove that, it, well, I'm not gonna prove it to you, but take my word for it. It does get to its destination quicker uh, because I've I've done this several times just to watch it mine, because you know I'm a sicko and I love to see the mining going on. Uh, but I've, I've told the mining ship to go to a sector after I've told my personal scout ship to go to the sector, like minutes after, right? And it gets there before me. It's fast, I love that, you know? Usually the big ships in games are very slow for balance reasons, but this is a really nice um, change and it's a, a balance in and of itself. You know, when it's moving around, it's sluggish and appears to be quite slow. But when it's when it's going into its like travel drive, it's kind of warp engine, so to speak, it's fast. Give it to me, yes, hello, okay. So, look, the way I've set it up, and this is this seems to be working for me so far, is I have set it to auto mine, right? So it will mine stuff up and then go to sell it. Now I've also loaded it up with cargo drones, but I'm not 100% sure if it needs them, right? Because what I've observed is the ship does dock on its own. So presumably it can just sell the stuff on its own and doesn't need drones to sell it for it. That I'm not too sure about. So we might actually test that now. Uh, okay, so I've told it to mine silicon or ice and nevidium, right? The reasoning here is even though right now in my universe, silicon is fetching me the largest profit um, for a common mineral, as I'm calling them, uh, meaning anything that isn't nevidium, even though it's it's fetching me the largest profit, I anticipate maybe affecting the market. Now, I don't know, again, there's a lot, a lot of unknowns with the game so far, but in theory, <laughs> if you're just flooding the market with silicon, it should it should like lower the price of it, right? Eventually. So my my plan here is to load up with whatever it can get and then sell it. Silicon or ice nevidium. And it has done that. My last load was um I think maybe 1,000 silicon, like 500 ore, and the rest was nevidium. And we can go, we can go to the player information here. We can go to the logbook. Um, and I do have the, uh, that mod that I mentioned in the last video that, that um, shows you how much your ships have spent as well, which is great. So you can see the margins on your traders. Links to um, the, all the mods I'm running in the description below. And I do have a couple that I didn't mention in the last video. So we can have a look here and we can scroll all the way down to where is she? Well, we've made a bit of money since then. Where are you? There you go. There you go. The SGT Curry Pants sold 1,129 Nvidium to Tolati Trading Station in Grand Exchange for 638,000 credits. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, the only thing I'm not 100% sure about right now is how fast it mines compared to a medium miner. So I'm just basing my excitement over its potential profits uh, based purely on the fact that it can it can load up on a lot of uh, a lot of resources but hey listen that's something to test for the future perhaps but I'd be very surprised if it didn't beat out like if you go I'm sure like one large versus one medium the large is gonna win that it would be silly if it didn't right but I suppose we, we really have to we really have to test like um, one large versus however many mediums it takes to equal that cargo space. So I'm pretty sure the cargo, cargo space is 20,000. So we can double check that. 20,000 cubic meters. Okay, so let's go to a medium miner. 6,000. Quick math! Quick math! 
All right, so we'd, we'd need three and a third medium miners to equal the cargo capacity of a large miner. So it's a little bit of a difficult test to run, but maybe we could do, we could potentially make up the, the 0.3 with some small miners. I don't know. This is another test I'd love to do. Uh, and man, I'm probably going to do it. This is not usually my kind of bag. I'm not the let's figure out the, the numbers of it kind of guy, but the game is driving me to, to want to do it. I'm very excited by it. So let's just click on this. All right, so we're, we're almost at um, at full storage capacity right now. So let's have a look at what's in its hold. It's picked up a little bit of ore and a bunch of silicon. Ooh, that might go for a very pretty penny indeed. Okay. So let's go over and buy a new ship. Now, I've checked the encyclopedia and the encyclopedia doesn't seem to have any information vis-a-vis -vis how many landing pads um, each of these miners have or any ship has. Actually, we can double, like surely it would tell you how many, how many uh, ships can dock at a carrier, right? Like if it doesn't have that information, dude, like what are we even doing here? Colossus Vanguard, um, uh, where's the carrier variant? Phoenix Sentinel. I, I think the Condor is a carrier. Okay. Drone capacity, storage capacity types. I'm not seeing number of ships that can dock, right? There you go. It's a carrier, but like how many ships can dock in it? <laughs> Why is it not telling me this information? Crew capacity, that's very strange, right? So I'm not 100% sure, but just observing the model, it looks like the, Ar the, the Magnetar, the Argon Large Miner, has three docking pads. And the Taladi equivalent, so hang on, what's it called? Let's go to Mining Heavy. It's the Crane. The Crane only has two, right? So that's why I've gone for the for the Magnetar. What's the what's the capacity difference? Ah, oh, okay, so the Taladi can store um, 8,800 more. <laughs> Listen to me. Let's go. That's, that's very arousing indeed. Don't even... Dude. Listen, I'm getting way too excited about all this. But okay, so let's go. Um, <laughs> you know what? Let's 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 buy a Taladi one because I wanna I wanna test them at some point. So we'll go buy ships at the shipyard. Let's go for the Crane Mineral, the Crane Vanguard, and uh, let's go. Let's build it out. So I'm going to go for the. I'm gonna go for the all-round drive just because the travel drive is like twice the price. And if you look at the travel speed, it's uh. 4,500 as opposed to 4,400. It's just it's just over like 100 um, meters per second more. It doesn't feel like much of a difference, okay? And I am going to load up on... Oh, more, more shields? We should probably load up on as many shields as possible. <laughs> I'm starting to get to the point where I've pissed off some factions so sometimes um I, they, they need to be defended right but um honestly to be to be perfectly honest with you i don't think we need a fighter escort that's just me being wanky because i love the concept of sure let's set up mining operations you know and send ships out <laughs> listen to me uh but the turrets on the uh on the on the large ships seem to be doing the trick so far so far, but we'll see. So we'll just go for the all-rounder here. I just want to make it cheap as possible because it's going to cut into our profits, you know. Um, but I also do want it heavily shielded. So if there's a spot for a shield, let's put down a shield, you know. Okay, so. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so it's got much fewer uh, defense turret slots than the, uh, than the Magnetar. That's okay. So shield and a mining turret on each one each turret requires it so it doesn't require its own shield you can run completely shieldless if if you want but uh i'm not a 12th level scrub here you know it's uh it's it's it's, it's one thing to to skimp out on a ship to try and maximize your profits that's fine and i'll i'll play ball with you on that concept every day of the week and twice on sundays but if you run out there with no shields and it results in the destruction of your ship dude that's your profits gone anyway so I mean, like, what are we doing here, you know? Okay. Make sure that I like to give it dock, uh, docking computer just in case I ever jump on board myself. Uh, we'll go long range software so that we can kind of use it inadvertently as a scout as well. And I'll give it trading computer extension mark one. I don't know if it needs it, but it's going to be, tr it's, it's selling its own stuff. So I'm throwing it on there for good measure, you know, uh, and give it a captain. And what are we at? Like, let's give it a few crew members as well. 
Now, there's like I've heard <laughs> rumors because I'm not 100% sure. Um, again, that's the theme of the game. You know, there's so much we don't know just because it's not told to us. Uh, there is a wiki that kind of explains a few more things, but not everything. Not that I've seen. Um, still not 100% sure what crew does, but I've, I've heard that it like boosts the efficiency of general systems and it might actually help to repair um, repair your ship like on its own just out and about which is kind of nice okay so this is this is much more than I paid for my magnetar but uh, let's do it I'm just going to oh, 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 oh. one second one moment please there we go all right so I just as a quick side note I have worked out how to capture the game without it freaking out just real quick it, it involved me capturing it with DX Tori and then sending that to OBS and it's recording that way. I could just record with the X-Tory, make no mistake, um, but I really like how I've got things set up in OBS. <laughs> so it's it's pretty flawless, it's fantastic. Okay, so uh, 3.6 mil for this, let's add it to the shopping cart, confirm the order, and it's going to take, it's gonna take six minutes to build. <laughs> Listen, my dude. Listen, we'll get we'll get back here once it's done. All right, couple of updates. Our Magnetar stalled. It just stopped dead. It was ready to trade, but it wasn't actually engaging in trade. And I had a funny feeling that it might have been its fighter escort trying to dock and just not being able to, and that was stalling it. So I unassigned the fighter escort, sent it somewhere else, and lo and behold, the Magnetar went off and did its trade. And we've just made, I believe, about 200,000 credits uh where here we go here we go the the curry pants has made 176 thousand credits from uh unloading a bunch of silicon i believe but it still has more on the hold so it will it will go around and, and keep selling it off until it's empty and then it'll go back to mining so that's nice ah so our crane is is up and running and i gotta tell you Without a fighter escort and with double the amount of drones, it did it so much quicker. <laughs> now, were the drones the deciding factor in it mining quicker? Hard to say. It could also have been the fact that it didn't have to faff around with its fighter escort. So despite the fact that its cargo hold is, is a decent amount larger than the Magnetar, the crane did complete its task quicker. It did mine quicker and it was off to trading. Now, we do have a bit of an issue. For the past 10 minutes or so, the crane has been faffing about with this uh, Taladianium foundry. Taladianium, yes, that's correctly pronounced, more or less, uh, <laughs> for a fictional substance. A anyway, so it's been faffing around trying to dock with this station. It docks and then it undocks and then docks and then it undocks. One, two things is happening. Either... <laughs> Either there's some kind of bug at play here, or I suspect more likely the fact that we haven't got cargo drones on it. So this was the test to see if a miner would sell its wares with just mining drones and with no cargo drones uh, on board. I would say, say just, just to be safe, look, take along some cargo drones, buddy. <laughs> I might personally do a ratio of six to four six being the mining drones, four being the cargo drones, because uh, I, I would much prefer to mine quicker and sell slower. Um, now, here we go. It's docked. It's docked. We can have a look at its cargo. It's got a little bit of navidium, some silicon, and a whole bunch of iron, and it's undocked again. It hasn't sold anything. <laughs> So I, I strongly suspect it needs some cargo drones. So yeah, there's your, there's, there's your pro tip right there. So uh, as, as much as it pains me, I would recommend you not have a fighter escort along with your large miner because it seems to just bog it down and eventually it'll stall at some point. Uh, and make sure you come along with, with some cargo drones. So there you go. Last thing I want to say is unrelated to mining. It has to do with mods. In my last video, I showcased a, a handful of just small, nice quality of life mods uh, that I have installed now. Since then, there has been an update to the game. I think it was at 1.3 previously, and now or 1.31 previously, I'm not sure. And now it's 1.32. And right after that update, my game started crashing. And when it crashed, it would tell me that it was insert particular mod here. So I uninstalled the mod and I opened it up again. And then it was the next mod that had an issue that caused it to crash. So it's nice to get that kind of feedback. So before uninstalling all of my mods and opening up my save again, I figured, hey, look, 
I'll just start a new game with the new patch and all my mods installed and it worked perfectly. So what seems to be happening is if you have mods installed and an update comes out, it's the update itself that triggers like some kind of mod incompatibility with your save, <laughs> right? So uh, presumably if you didn't update, it would still work and the mods do work with the update i can confirm because they're working now with my rolled back save that i had before i installed the mods and they were working in the new game so just keep that in mind all the more reason to back up your save before you install mods and it might mean that if you're going to play with mods you're either going to lose some progress uh when when there's a, a game update and or you might have to start again reasonably frequently. Now, that's not going to be an issue because there are mods around that allow you to cheat in, um, you know, assets, I believe. I haven't looked at it yet, but I believe they're out there. Uh, so you can kind of reset up your save to, to more or less how it was before, which is nice. And, you know, there are different game starts and there are even mods for different game starts, which is really cool. I recently unlocked the, I think it was the... I can't remember what it was called, but it was some sort of trader game start. It starts you in uh, in Talati space, I think in uh, Hayward's Twin, one or two, one of those sectors. Uh, and it starts you off with a, a Kestrel and a, a Miner, which is which is kind of nice, and like 200,000 credits. So that's a, that's a real nice start. Um, in my opinion, if you want to like get straight into mining or something, I'm not 100% sure how I unlocked it, but I, I presume it has something to do with uh, accruing a certain amount of funds or maybe rep with the Talati, which isn't difficult to get, just operating in their space, trading a lot in their space, got me some decent rep with them, and now I can take missions from them, from the uh, com commerce something or other, we can have a look, we can double check. So where is it? It's statistics, factions and relations, here we go. So as you can see, uh, uh, Hatikva's Free League hates me. It might have something to do with the fact that I took out a bunch of their laser towers on the request of the Talati, but we don't have to worry about that. Okay, the Talati Company. I think that's the one. Yo, no, no, all the mystery. No, no, no. Talati Company is, uh, is where I have all my rep from. That's pretty much just from trading in their space. Hey, how you doing? And that's, you know, eventually got me the, to the point of being able to buy their military ships, like, um, like the frigate, the, uh, hang on. <laughs> I want to, oh, listen, we've got we to gotta be thorough here. I'm nothing if not thorough. That's a lie. I'm very often not thorough at all. Uh, okay, I think it's medium. Uh, the Osprey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but here's a funny little quirk. I can't buy it in this system, but I can buy an Osprey in... Pretty sure I can buy it in this system over here. There you go. Frigate. Frigate class Osprey, which does have a docking port, which is kind of nice. But listen, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, so moral of the story, back up your saves before you install mods. I can't I can't reiterate that enough. But for the moment, guys, thank you very much for watching. Let me know down below, how are you going with mining? Is it everything you dreamed it would be? <laughs> yes, for me, yes, it is. It's, it's very lucrative, far more lucrative than it was in the past. And for the moment, it works reasonably well. I mean, it works. At a base level, it works. And it kind of didn't work so well in previous x games not in my experience so i'm reasonably happy with that next up i've got to figure out if trading is is worth a damn so far not so much but you know, i've really only dipped my toe in it Ooh, i'm excited to see where we go with this anyway thanks again for watching taste the game be excellent to each other and i'll see you next time ricky summer out